Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, your guide to motorsport sponsorship. Here's your host, Josh Weesey. Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Four Wheel Parts. Today we have Ice Oval Stoneville Racer Gunnar Stern on the line, and we have a lot of fun with this episode. Uh, especially with his name. I have a little bit of fun with his name early on because uh, I absolutely love the name Gutter. Uh, but either way, I learned a lot in this episode too. One of the things is uh, organic integration. I'd never heard that term before and now I need to use it all the time. Uh, but first, before we get in the show, I got a few things to go through with you and I want to start with a message about four-wheel parts. So September is suspension month and you can get up to $500 off on select lifts. They have uh, several brands, Rubicon Express, Pro Comp. Uh, both of those are actual four-wheel parts brands. There's Fox, Bill Steen, Rough Country, Rancho, and there's others as well, Icon, Terraflex, you name it. So you can head over to the website, check that out. And also you can find out about the XRC Gen 3 Smittybilt Winch. It's brand new in, in previous episodes. It was pre-order only, and now it's ready to ship. So... Head over there, check those things out. They got a bunch of different sizes of them. You know, they got a 12K option. Uh, they got seal cables, synthetic cables, a 9K option. So check those out. Um, I honestly think they look really cool too, which if people don't know me yet, I I get pretty excited about things that look cool. Uh, so either way, check that out. Pretty good stuff. Um, you can always call 1-800-284-9840 or visit fourwheelparts.com and you just kind of pay attention sometimes because they have cool deals that come out. Uh, when this episode released, it's already gone by the time you're listening to this. But they had a, like a two day sale where they, you know, four wheel parts paid your sales tax. So you gotta you gotta watch out for those things. If you sign up for the mailing list, you find out about all of it, um, which I would recommend as well. Because uh, sometimes you get a deal and you're like, you know, if you've been sitting on something you want to get, you get this. You know, we pay your sales tax deal. You just want, want to hop on it that night. So either way, head over there, check that out. Let me know if you got questions. Josh at SponsoredRiderClubPodcast.com. And I'd love to get your feedback. Uh, I would really like to understand what you need from the show. So you can always email me. I just gave you my email address a minute ago. Uh, or head over to iTunes, uh, also known as Apple Podcasts, and leave a rating and review. That's really important for the show anyways. Uh, that's what allows us to continue to exist because... Uh, iTunes is where the majority of our downloads come from, and the more ratings and reviews we get, uh, the more exposure we get from Apple Podcasts. That's how the algorithm works. So head over to iTunes, leave that rating review. That'd be phenomenal. Uh, But whatever podcast player you subscribe, that way episodes will automatically download to your phone or whatever device you're using. Most people are going to be listening from their phones. Um, It's just that much easier, that much easier. Uh, I need to take a minute to to thank all of the other awesome sponsors that make this show possible. Amsoil, they provide amazing lubrication products, and they're a company that runs on freedom. You can find out more at amsoil.com slash rider. Solderweld, they produce game-changing metal bonding technology, and they're ready to rescue your race. Topthepodium.com, they're experts in motorsports sponsorship and website creation. Bold Racing, they're a family desert UTV race team. Crash Act Industries, they provide human protection and extreme racing products. I also want to shout out some of our other partners, MBRP, HMK USA, Studboy Traction, and High Octane Coffee. And now it's time to get in the show, but first I want to start with your High Octane Coffee marketing tune-up. This segment features Joe Sylvester of High Octane Coffee, and he gives tidbits of sponsorship advice. You can find out more about Joey at Joe Sylvester 8 or at High Octane Coffee. And then we'll get into the interview with Gunner. What's up, guys? Joe Sylvester here with your high-octane coffee marketing tune-up of the day. Today, I want to talk about being omnipresent. Omnipresent means being in more than one place. Don't focus on just building your Instagram or just building your YouTube or just building your Facebook or solely relying on just the sponsors or just the stickers on the side of your car to and expect that that is going to deliver value and return on investment for sponsors. Make yourself present in your local community. Make yourself present at the race car uh, tracks, um, car shows, even, you know, hot rod shows. Offer to bring your race car out, put it on display, shake hands, kiss babies, give out autograph cards. Uh, Any kind of charity work with uh, children's hospitals, uh, maybe more animal hospitals are your thing, animal rescues. Um, Maybe making some appearances at local schools. Little kids love race cars. Use that to your advantage. Make a positive impact on your community. Also, trade shows. 
things like PRI, SEMA. These are all things that are very important for you in building your brand and being, like I said, omnipresent. Make sure that when you're making that phone call, or you're sending that email, that sponsor has already met you. That person has already come in contact with you face to face and you're going to be a step up on the game. Today's show features Gunnar Stern. <laughs> oh. No, Gunnar Stern. Uh, Gunnar. Uh, I love the name, man. Like I, I just want to say that name over and over. But enough about how awesome your name is. Tell us about yourself. Oh, yeah. Like you said, my name's uh, Gunnar Stern. I'm from West Chicago, Illinois. Um, 26 years old. Um, I'm a pro champ, 440 ice oval, uh, sumo boat racer. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's see what else. I got two sisters, Shannon and Jamie, uh, my girlfriend, Macy. I got two dogs, uh, yellow lab and a, a husky and oh. my parents, Sean and Julie. And that's about it. No, <laughs> the whole family tree right there. No, perfect. That's awesome. Uh, I love huskies other than the fact that they don't listen because they think they're better than you. No. No. Uh, they're like no, cats. Wants nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah. I love the way they yeah. look. Oh my gosh! Like it's hard to find a better looking dog than a husky. But uh, yeah, they just I... they just do their thing. Um, but yeah, labs though the, the exact opposite. They like they just want to please you, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, we're uh, I'm working on my lab right now. I'll get her to get into the duck hunting here. So oh, there we're, you go. Uh, we're... Yeah. Well, she's got a long way to go, but we're we're uh, we're practicing. Very good, very good. Uh, well, I want to find out a lot more about your background uh, in Heat Two here, and uh, let's hear your story. I mean, let, how'd you get into motorsports? What's the path that you took to get to where you're at today? Let's start from the beginning. Yeah. So uh, my parents, they're huge summer builders. I mean, they've been summer building way before I was born. They, you know, they were trail riders, you know, every single weekend going a couple hundred miles a weekend. You know, they're they're huge. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, you know, kind of just drug into it, you know, trail riding when I was younger. And, uh, you know, it's, I was born in April. So that next winter I was already (laughs) trail riding at like eight months old. So (laughs) yeah, they were going pretty hard with it. And, uh, so they say it's, kind of a uh, couple slow winters with the snow and they stuck me on a kitty cat and they found out a little kid group that was racing, you know, like a circuit mm-hmm. throughout Wisconsin. And, uh, we went to one of those races and, uh, um, kind of rented a sled that they had to use and we just kept going back, you know, and kept, but the next weekend we eventually bought our own kitty cat. Uh, we Took our, uh, I had a Mini Z at the time, took okay. the Mini Z, put some studs and carbides on it, and uh, we just kept on racing, you know. We went the next year, and then we kept it going every weekend, and that, that, you know, that series is, when we were racing with the kids, it was, like, pretty, pretty heavy. Like, we were racing 14 weekends out of the year. So oh, my we goodness. Were, like, a lot of traveling. Yeah, That's a we, lot. We'd race one. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. We, we were traveling a lot, because there was two different series. There was a southern group and a northern group, and then. We'd race the Southern Group on Saturday and then go travel Saturday night through the Northern Group, which you know could be a couple hundred miles away or so. So it was <laughs> a lot of traveling. Looking back at it, yeah, that is a uh, ton. Yeah, it was a lot of fun though. Like as a kid, I'm thinking in my in my mind like that would have been awesome. But as an adult, I could be like, holy cow, that is a lot and it's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what my parents thought about it. Um, <laughs> because they had their, you know their friends there with all the other. Of the other adults, yeah, you know, yeah. Buddy, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, and uh, so after that, kind of worked my way through modified kitty cats and modified 120s, and uh, marked my way out of that kids group into the USSA group. Where I started racing at junior novice sites, like just regular 340 stocks mm-hmm. and sprinters, so like a you know custom chassis, but with like a 340 stock engine in it. And then uh, I think I started racing pro. I think I raced one pro race when I was 16, and then I started racing pro full time when I was 17. Okay. So uh, I just couldn't wait to get up to pro. I didn't want anything to do with semi pro or anything, any other junior classes. I just wanted to race pro class right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. 
Gosh, I'm still stuck on that 14 weeks. That's just a lot. Uh, 14 weekends. Uh, I would if if I could get because I'm a trail rider. If I could get like a fourth of that <laughs> in now on a, like a trail ride, oh my goodness, that would be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But, That's uh, what my parents are like. You know, now we're like, no trail riding. It's all racing, and they kind of oh, you know, right. like, oh, throw all your fault, Gunner. Ever since you started racing, we don't the trail ride anymore. So. Yeah, that's a good point. You kind of get tied up in that. You don't have time for anything else. Yeah, but we still have fun. Yeah. So. Oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, well, cool. Well, let's uh, let's get it closer to today. Like, what other things uh, happened from that point till now? And then, what are you working on? And what are you fired up about right now? Yeah. So, um, let's see. I think my career really took off. Like, was it five years ago? I mean, we were racing pro for, I've been racing in the pro class for what, 10 years now. So, mm-hmm. but uh, we were just kind of like stuck in the back of the pack, not really doing much. I wasn't making all the races and I was in school and like high school and college and stuff. And then right when I graduated um, college, we kind of made a switch, you know, kind of to just to make this more full time and kind of dedicate a lot of our you know effort into it. And mm-hmm. uh, we made a switch from Polaris to Skidoo. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time, Another racer, uh, Malcolm Chartier, was retiring. So okay. uh, uh, this guy, Mike Hool, was helping him, him out mm-hmm. and switch teams to our team. So he's been helping us out. And uh, since then, we've, we've been killing it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I mean, that first year, we didn't kill it right away. We got third in the point standings, which was a big jump from ninth the year before. But every past three years, we won the uh, points championship. Um, we I think I calculated it out. We've won like 67% of the races. So <laughs> like, That's we, awesome. It's like almost every other race. Yeah. yeah. So it's been like a, you know, a big improvement since then. And uh, yeah, I mean, lately, um, a lot of changes going on with uh, our, our classes and like just the rules in general. Okay. Um, past couple of years, the numbers have been kind of down a little bit, whether it's from injuries or just people quitting, you know, no one's kind of filling those roles. So, uh, this coming year is going to be a lot of new changes coming up. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So what's it called? Pro star cup. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. That's the uh, series that we race. Okay. Perfect. So that's the traveling series. Yep. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. So yeah, that's, that's pretty exciting. You won past three years in a row. Um, you know, now you got new rules coming in this year, so that'll be interesting. I'm sure everybody's a little bit stressed about that. Yeah, it's uh, everyone kind of has their own take on it. Like honestly, I didn't want to see this happen. Nah. Uh, we were still doing uh, you know, the sled that we we're racing, which is the, the Pro Champ sled. So this year we're uh, going to more of a more of a stock sled. Okay. Well, there's two different things. There's a, there's a brand new class called S3. Brand new, like okay. complete race class, and uh, they're trying to make this the premier series. Okay. And uh, so, I'll be racing that class with you know Skidoo support, just to trying to get that taken off, kind of you know, kind of figure things out, you know, because I don't think many people will be racing that series, but okay, um, that'll be one one uh, series we'll be racing, and then the, the premier class, which will be um, still called Pro Champ, but it'll be basically the same chassis but with a stock engine instead of a modified engine that we've been racing okay okay yeah that sounds good um well i kind of want to know right now about you know what are some of your current partners and sponsors who are the people that you're working with Mm -hmm. Uh, so the big one is obviously uh red bull Mm -hmm. they brought me on a couple years ago so it's been it's been exciting being with those guys um other than them, we have uh, Muscadoo, FXR, Woody's, Traction, uh, Daco, mm-hmm. Spy Optic, um, some local companies, Chunk Construction, Advanced Compressor, Extra Custom Carbon, Don't Stop the Music Entertainment. You know, some companies I've been with for a long time, just, you know, through the junior ranks. And, you know, there's buddies, you know, or family friends that kind of own businesses that help us out. You know, like to put them on sled and make yeah. sure they get mentioned because, you know, they, they help us out a lot. Yeah, I want to talk even more about those when we get to the main event here because I always get really excited about people who can pull in, like, the local community support. And, um, you know, st- especially when you have some folks 
you know, headlining like Red Bull, Skidoo, FXR, like that. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. So I, I love it that the, you got some of these other companies that you're uh, still partnering with. Um, that's really cool. Um, going back to the the Red Bull thing, though, do you know if there's other athletes within your series that are uh, Red Bull athletes? Uh, no, I'm the, I'm the first one. That's how I was I mean, thinking. there's other, you know, other players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Levi, you know, yeah. Guy, but I'm yeah. the only uh, ice global guy. I call him okay. Leave because we're so close. Like we're just we're just best buds. I don't even. I take out the I. I just <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Leave. Yeah, well, that's. I've never heard that. Ever. No, it's because it's only me and him. You know, because we're so close. That's oh, why he has sure, sure. That's why he hasn't been on the show yet. You know, because we're too close. I don't oh, want to like. I'll ask him next weekend when I see him then. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah, do that, and then I just gotta make sure I'll talk to him ahead of time. Uh, you know, so okay. make sure he, he, he doesn't let you, uh, let you know, like the, our inside secrets. I don't want I don't want everybody to know that. So, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I was thinking about in your specific series that, um, I was like, I, I don't think there's a lot of Red Bull athletes in there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, cause I know it's a, that's a, a prominent club, uh, to be a part of. And, um, you know, I've heard that they, the Red Bull athletes are, are treated pretty well, um, by Red Bull. Um, have you ever been invited? I'm, I'm thinking I got this right, but have you ever been invited to go to like an athlete summit with them? Do they do that? Yep, they do do that. I went to one uh, two two years ago. Okay, perfect. Them. And it's not it's yeah, not like one. just snowmobilers or just motocross. It's like all the athletes, right? No, it was all of the United States Red Bull athletes. Okay, so. that is so cool. Um, like everyone you can think of, the, like even the ones that weren't from the uh, United States, some of them from like Canada and stuff are there. Mm-hmm. It was there were like seventy athletes there or something. Yeah, that's. I think crazy. that's so neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was cool. It was a cool experience for sure. Just get everybody together, you know, mixing genres up, and that, that's one thing I like about this show. And is I I bring all sorts of different types of athletes on here. I mean, I I, I stick to motorsports. There's a lot other of other athletes that I probably could, you know, factor in, but I just kind of stick to, to motorsports. But um, there's so much you can learn, I think, from the different disciplines and the different genres. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. I mean, when I went down there, and uh, there was people like I didn't even know what they did, and they were they were sponsored by Red Bull. They're, they're right. Red Bull athletes. Like they were like people that like would use a compass to get from like one point to another point. Hmm. I forget the name of the sport, like choreograph or something. I huh. don't know what it was, but it was like pretty cool. Just all these different people were there. And that was like such a, it was a cool experience because I was like just brought on that previous uh, summer and I got to meet all these people that I've been you know looking up to. Oh, like, yeah. Who uh, was there? Uh, Robbie Madison was there. He was doing crazy stuff, and there's all these people that were like, all these all the skateboarders, you know, were there, and uh, it was just cool meeting all them and just kind of talking with them and throwing stuff around, and you know, people I've been looking up to it was kind of cool meeting all of them. Oh yeah, uh, I heard too that I I can't remember who was telling me this. I think it might have been uh, Kyle Pauline was saying that he went to one of these before, and there was uh, a chess player on there. Uh, that that was attended. Yeah, He's yeah. like, what? Ch- uh, Red Bull sponsors chess players, but I don't know. Uh, he was at the one, yeah. He was. Uh, he's actually really good. He's like, they actually had like a chess board down there. He's like playing people. He's, oh like, my gosh! Him, like, two or three, two or three moves or something like that. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm trying to. I, I was trying to look up this this point to point compass navigation thing. What'd you call it again? He, I want to know what that word is. It, it is called like. Oh, maybe it started with an O or a C. I forget. Or orienteering. Like, sure or, that's it. That's orienteering. It, <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. This is the thing. Uh, yeah, compass it use is thing, yeah. and orient earring. Wow. This wow. Isn't this is the wild? thing. This is the <laughs> thing, and it's uh. Yeah, and the and Red Bull sponsors these guys. That's okay. If people want this to happen, I could try to get an orienteering. Uh, athlete on the show. Um, there might be a couple of, I'm imagining there's like five out there. So <laughs> I don't know. This is crazy. <laughs> Who does that? Like, I feel like I could do a show just on this, like the art of orienteering. There's probably is a podcast out there. The orientation pot orienteering podcast, yeah. you know, sponsored by Red Bull. Um, wow. That'd be, that's interesting. 
Uh, but that, I, I don't know. I just, I'm so glad that you gave it that example too, because I get super excited about that. I would love to go just sit in one of those events and be like, oh, you do orienteering. Like, oh, you do uh, chess. And like, oh, you're a snowmobiler. And like, oh my gosh, that's cool. The guy that blew me away the most was, uh, his name's Daryl Snake Eyes Lewis. And he plays Street Fighter Five. That's all he plays. What? All the time. And he's like, yeah, he plays Street Fighter Five. He goes to these tournaments. <laughs> he just kicks kicks butt all the time. Okay, hold he on like, a minute. He now. practices for like six hours a day or something like that. You're telling me? Hold, let, let's just we got we got to put this thing in reverse here for a minute. You're telling me this guy is also sponsored by Red Bull, and not, that's what he does? Is he plays Street Fighter Five? Yeah. No. Street Fighter Five. No. Maybe, maybe the new one. Yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> This is nuts. I, this is nuts. I hope people listening right now are just as shocked as I am. <laughs> oh my god! I'm trying to take notes down. Like, how am I going to factor this into like the when I release this show? You know, find out how orienteering, Street Fighter Five, and something else or another can <laughs> build your sponsorship <laughs> program. You know, that's what I'm, that's what's in my head right now. Uh. Okay, wow. Now that my head's blown, um, you know, I guess that's probably a great time to take a moment to thank the sponsors for this podcast, and then we'll come back to the main event. Safety is our overriding priority. I hear it all the time, but I have to ask myself, is it though? Is that the first thing we think of? Is that the first thing you think of? Over the past couple of years, we've seen the performance of production UTVs increase, I don't know, somewhere around 350%. That means these machines give us a lot more opportunity to have fun and win races, but it also, unfortunately, gives us new opportunities to crash. And that's why we have partnered with Crash Addict Industries. The owner, Travis Pointer, became very accustomed to crashing early in his career. He saw it as inevitable, and he set out to make the process safer. With a passion for racing, welding, and engineering, Crash Attic Industries now produces full cage and other protection systems intentionally designed to protect you during an accident on the track. They also offer a line of human protection products through their vendors. Do this for me at this point. If you're racing with a stock cage right now, please go check out CrashAddict.com and see, at least just see what they have to offer. Even if you choose to go with a different company, please... Please, please make safety your overriding priority. When I stop to think about all the things that make motorsports awesome, I think of camaraderie, I think of speed, I think of friendship, and I also think of family. And it's hard to go through all of those elements without thinking of bold racing. Now, bold racing... And Jimmy Moore, the owner, has been a long-time supporter of this show and Impact Fuel overall. Jimmy Moore is a desert racer that also has a ton of experience with suspension, UTV axles, and general go-fastness. I would love for you to head over to their Facebook page, Bold Racing, or their Instagram page, Bold.Racing, and just show them some love. Let them know that you support their race program and you want to see them continue to promote the amazing elements of motorsports. Hey guys, George Hamill here to talk about Solder Weld's new off-road repair kit. If you're a racer of any type or an off-road enthusiast like myself, you're going to want to take a close look at this product that bonds metal on the spot. Solderweld has combined some of their most elite products into one small kit that fits perfectly under your seat or strapped to a roll cage and allows you to make some insane fixes anywhere you go. How many of us have been in a race or out on the trail and got a rock chip in a radiator or brake line? We have seen a top tier desert race team at the 2019 Min 400 taken out by a simple rock to the radiator. If they had an off-road repair kit on board, they could have been back up and running in just minutes. The kit includes everything you need to work on dirty aluminum, stainless steel, copper, and many other metals. Solder Weld's cutting edge technology allows you to make these fixes with extremely low heat and incredibly high tensile strength, leaving you a lasting fix every time. 
Don't be that guy broke down on the side of the trail. Get your off-road repair kit today and your friends will thank you. Let's talk about your truck for a minute. You can count on it to haul your vehicle and your gear to the track or to the trailhead, but I bet you never think about the motor oil. Here's why you should. Your oil is the only thing preventing your engine from wearing out and breaking down. To keep your truck running strong, look for an oil with added wear protection. Like, for example, Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil. It delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than is required by the leading industry standard. It provides the next level protection today's demanding engines need to keep running for years and to keep effortlessly towing your ride to the track. Go to amsoil.com slash rider to find out more. Make the switch to Amsoil Synthetic Motor Oil today to keep your vehicle running great. Two questions I get continuously about this show and about sponsorship is do I need my own website and do I need a resume? The answer is, in my opinion, yes to both. And that's why we partner with topthepodium.com. Now, if you want to see an example of what a professional website and what a professional resume looks like, you got to check out topthepodium.com. They did my website. The Sponsored Rider Club Podcast website is sponsoredriderclubpodcast.com. That was created by Jeff Vanistall of topthepodium.com. I think it's awesome. I get a lot of good feedback about it. And there's a number of other websites out there that Jeff has produced that are just phenomenal. So I think it's important in this world of social media where you have control of your content. That's what a website does. It gives you full control. We don't know what Facebook's going to do sometimes. We don't know what Instagram's going to do. We don't know what Twitter's going to do. So if we don't have that central location to direct people and house our content, there is some risk that we incur. So I strongly recommend getting a website, talking to topthepodium.com. And then the resume, again, is massive. And if you want to stand out, get it done professionally. And honestly, it is one of the best ways to step up your game and present yourself in the best way possible. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are now in the main event. That's where we talk about sponsorship tactics and strategies. Um, and Gunner, I, I kind of want to start this, uh, this section off with some examples of how you've made contact with a sponsor, built a relationship with a sponsor, uh, things like that, you know. And, and I, I do, I would love to dig into, um, you know, some of the local companies and some of the family friends and stuff too, just to better understand how those things came about. But I don't know. Start wherever you want. Um. Yeah. Sure. Um. So, kind of sticking with the Red Bull thing, I'll stick with them first and mm-hmm. kind of gloss over. Uh, how that kind of came to be because i think it's important honestly yeah um yeah. when you get kind of when you're trying to uh make yourself you know like you start with your local companies and kind of building on that and getting to a point in your career when you think you could approach these uh bigger companies mm-hmm. and try and see if you know you're a fit for them or if they you know are willing to even take a look at you so it all came kind of came to be kind of like it was like five years ago i started talking with rebel and i didn't get signed until two years ago so it was a really long process oh, wow and uh yeah it's kind of weird how that happened uh, my sister was like working for uh, this pretzel company so she'd like hand out like pretzels to like companies mm-hmm. that go to their offices and stuff and paint them pretzels and she'd go to the Red Bull office which is downtown chicago here uh, and uh she just threw my name out to you know uh, who happens to be my uh athlete marketing uh manager now and uh he gave me a call like a little bit after that and i was you know just just starting to get good in the you know in the pro series and we just made this jump to skidoo so you know he gave me a call and i was like hey man you know i'm looking at you kind of just keep my eyes on you and you know i've seen how you're doing and uh you know i was like super stoked to get a call from him you know and i was like oh man this is good i don't want to mess this up and uh he uh, kind of gave me some advice on what to do with uh, my social media and stuff. And um, because the time wasn't up to par yet, honestly, it was kind of like kind of wasn't too, uh, wasn't really, uh, didn't really tell me to tell people who I was mm-hmm. and I didn't really have much uh, um, content to it 
Mm-hmm. So he kind of gave me some pointers there, and I kind of listened to uh, what he said. And uh, you know, uh, that talked for probably a couple years um, with him, just you know, making sure you know. First, he gave me he gave me some product, you know, make sure I like that. So mm-hmm. that's kind of the first thing with these companies, especially with energy drinks, you know, with Red Bull or Monster. Like they want you to like the product, and make oh, sure yeah. you're using it, and you know, something that he kind of said that was uh kind of stuck with me was it just kind of like integrating the product into your life you know like organically they call it organic integration which mm-hmm. is kind of like a buzzword in the in the uh marketing you know s- scheme but uh i think it's you know it's kind of proof that you, you don't have to really be so pushy about you know the product and uh kind of you just get to uh kind of just have to see how it is and how you use it you know in your lifestyle and not really just like being like super like, robotic about it, like this is Red Bull. Like I drink this stuff, and just having it there and like with you and and uh, that's kind of stuff I've learned. But I kind of learned like to use with Red Bull, but I kind of like you know use that for um, um, a lot of my other sponsors. You know. Oh yeah, I like that. That's a good little term there. Uh, I don't think that we've actually uh, had had that term uh, sh- shared on the show yet. Really? Yeah, I think that Nobody you might be the first. It. You only know, like, took. Only took 183 or 180, yeah, <laughs> episodes to get there, but over that we got there. I'm gonna have to start using that normally, like, you know, and act like the other person knows what it means. Like, oh yeah, you know, the other day I was <laughs> orienteering and uh, utilizing my o- organic integration tactics, and yeah, you know, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, that's good. I, I I like that story. Um, I want to clarify something though. <laughs> you said your sister was delivering the pretzels as part of her pre- her service, like to this to, mm-hmm. to Red Bull, and she just happened to drop your name with somebody. Yeah, yeah. Was it like <laughs> was it, it like on. a receptionist or a manager or like uh, who the heck? Did she even talk to you? I think it was. Um, I think it was Brent, my uh, my manager. Oh I think wow! Somehow she like walked through the offices and kind of handed out the pretzels. I, that's what she told me. I mean, wow, um, that's yeah. pretty crazy. So she got it. She got your name dropped to the right person. Yeah, that's that's super crazy and awesome. Yeah, looking back at it now, it's kind of kind of crazy how it all happened. It is. If the if what if she was sick that day, or what if the pretzels yeah. got burned? <laughs> you know what I mean. I've never thought of that. What if that guy that was sick? Nice her, what if Brad was like, no, 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 I'm cutting out carbs today. You know, and he doesn't take that pretzel. <laughs> you and I wouldn't be talking. Right Our life now. would be changed. Life would be completely not. different. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> you might be right. You might be yeah. racing for some like garbage company, like Monster or something. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punks out there, you know. <laughs> I I was uh who was I talking to? It was somebody on the show that, that had a, an energy drink. I don't I don't think it was Red Bull, but I said the opposite. Whatever it was, I said the opposite. I, uh just talking to like whoa, 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 back it up here. Uh Red Bull's the best or whatever it was, you know, that we were talking about at the time. And I was like, You got me. That was a good call. Good call. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's that, I love those like those stories because um, people ask me they're like, you know, how do I get sponsored and um, all the time. I mean, I'm doing a show about it. That's all I talk about on the show. And yeah. sometimes it's like, gosh, you just got to be in the right place, right time. But you know, you got to be ready for it uh, when it happens. But uh, it's all about trying. Like if I guess you know, I, I got maybe a different way of looking at this to to better understand how people could could use that situ- situation. How did your sister know to drop name drop your name at Red Bull? Like, how did she even get that in her mind that that was something that she should be doing? You know, I just think that um, she just took that you know opportunity. You know, she's part of the team. Um, she you know goes to races with me. She takes you know she takes a lot of photos of me, and I use that for my social medias and stuff. So. I think she just, you know, uh, knew that that was a good opportunity for uh, us to uh, kind of get our name out, our team name out, and my name to uh, to Brent. And mm-hmm. uh, honestly, I don't, I don't really, I didn't ask her to do it. I didn't even know she was going there. I mm-hmm. think she uh, saw that she was going to Red Bull that day, and she uh, somehow knew that he was 
there. I don't know what'll happen. I'll have to ask her the story better. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool though, because uh, the reason I say that is, you know, it's a different way of looking at the the pitch, right? Is well, if you have someone, a friend, someone in your family, a, you know, the racer, um, and they're they have access to people, depending on. I mean, maybe it's random. Like this seems somewhat random, but like if they know to drop your name, or if they expect that if they get the opportunity that uh, you know they're gonna start talking about you, that that's that's great. Uh, I think that that's something people could take action on. Like you could go to your friends, be like, hey, if you get an opportunity, name drop me. Like you don't have to. I'm not gonna ex- you know I'm not gonna expect it, but if you do, that's great. You know, maybe it'll go somewhere. Um, I think the only caution I'd I'd have to that is. Uh, if you have people that like friends or something that maybe work in a, in, uh, say if they work at Red Bull or work at some other potential sponsor, just make sure you're not making them uncomfortable. Um, cause you, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to put them in a bad spot or make them do something they don't really want to do. But this is kind of a cool scenario because it was, you know, she took it upon herself based off of her understanding of your needs, the team's needs. Mm-hmm. Um, she saw an opportunity, she took it. Boom! That was step one in a two-year uh, process of a lot of a lot of smaller incremental steps. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, what about another sponsor? I mean, um, yeah, how you made some connections there? Um. So let's see. I mean, with FXR it was kind of like they kind of do this thing. Um, they kind of if anybody can really. I'm not saying anybody, but. Uh, they have a application process on their website where mm-hmm. you can go out and fill all like the application and send it into them, and they can um, either get started with like their grassroots program with like you know a certain discount, fifty percent off, and off products for you know however much money or you know wh- whatever it is. And uh, that's kind of how I started with them. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and uh, we, uh, you know, I was with doing that that you know fifty percent off. I think mine was 50% off for probably three, four years. Okay. And um, I just got in contact with them just by emailing, you know, if I had like issues with an order or something, or if I, you know, had a question about something, one of the problems, if I'm a jacket, I had a question about my jacket or something, just for an example, um, the people that work there, that company's kind of smaller. So I was talking to people that were also in charge of their sponsorship stuff. Mm -hmm. And with their location being close to a, a location where I race up in Winnipeg. I race right right next to uh, their headquarters there. Okay. Um, we uh, kind of got talking at the racetrack one time. They stopped by and they saw that I was uh, wearing their stuff. And this is before I kind of even knew them. You know, they stopped by a trailer, introduced themselves um, to me and uh, kind of took that opportunity to, you know, formally meet them in person, which mm-hmm. I think is always, you know, the best way to, to meet, you know, your sponsors. Like, because, you know, today there's a lot of times when you won't even meet your, a lot of these uh, companies, you know, people you're talking to face-to-face, whether right. it's, you know, bigger companies and stuff. So, you know, that's kind of where uh, I took that uh, opportunity to kind of really tell them how much I love their product and, uh, you know, how much I love the, you know, I like like wearing it and you know, how well it worked for me. And uh, from that point on, I feel like I kind of built a bit better uh, relationship with them just through, uh uh, that, you know, formal meeting. And from that point on, you know, I got, you know, better deals and kind of, you know, better, uh, you know, a little bit more attention from them as a company and, you know, got some more stuff from them and kind of built on the, that relationship to uh, to where we are now. Mm-hmm. Now, I definitely like the, you know, the meeting face-to-face thing too. You know, kind of an, a, another part of this question is how do you build a relationship with a sponsor? And I, I do think that's part of it. Um, you know, if I just think right now of, uh, the, the the folks who sponsor this show, we got a lot of a lot of great partners that come on board for the show. Um, I've met, I think I've met everybody in person now, or at least you know representative, uh, except for Travis Pointer of Crash Hack Industries. Uh, <laughs> like I just thinking right now, we've never met. So Travis, if you're out there listening to this, maybe it's time. Um. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's, I think so. I, I don't think I missed anybody there, uh, but that's pretty cool. Um, but it's tough. It is tough. And especially in the world where, you know, you can have so much electronic communication, um, 
you know, even even phone calls don't always happen uh, with the sponsorship stuff. But I do. I do strongly feel that you can build a lot of good relationships with uh, with the face to face interactions, um, and if you can't make that happen for whatever reason, um, you know another thing you can leverage is uh, um, you know FaceTime, Skype, WebEx, you know some sort of video platform as well. Like for example, Travis has been on my show, my live show twice now, so like I I I know his mannerisms to an extent and. I haven't met him in person, but like I, I kind of know what that interaction would look like based off of doing you know video chat stuff. Um, so I would definitely recommend that with folks. But I get it. Sometimes you get so comfortable in the, um, you know, the text, the email, the direct messages, the fourteen hundred million other ways that you can talk with somebody without actually talking to them. Um, but yeah, if you get that opportunity, I, I recommend seize it. I agree. I think uh, you know. A lot, of, a lot of my sponsors, I've, you know, either started with, you know, either messaging, just cold calling or, you know, sending out emails. Um, just uh, like an example, I'm kind of talking to a sponsor right now. It kind of just happened to be a, uh, or a potential sponsor. I just sent out a message on, on Instagram, actually, and they uh, kind of got back to me and said, you know, it's a contact you can use. And uh, I... Uh, I've got in contact with uh, someone at that company and we're kind of looking at a potential sponsor as we're talking right now. So I would say, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, kind of just go for it. If it's better to sending that message or if you have a number to call, just call on it and mm-hmm. getting out there. And you really don't know what can happen. Honestly, if, you know, you get in contact with the right person, if they're looking for the right thing out of the sponsorship, whether it's a, you know, a bigger sponsor or, you know, a sponsor. And if, if you don't think that you're up for it, you know, whether if your team isn't big enough, or if you don't have the results, you know, you could still go for it. I wouldn't say that, that don't be, uh, don't not go for it, you know, mm-hmm. for, for talking to someone. Mm-hmm. So. Well, along similar lines here, have you run into a scenario where things just didn't work out right with the sponsor? You know, maybe they never got back with you or maybe, uh, you worked with them and it just wasn't the right relationship or have you had something like that? I mean, I've, I've talked to, I mean, and I've talked to, I've sent out a lot of times where, um, you know, I've gotten that initial contact with um, someone from a company and they, uh, whether it just didn't respond to me and I kind of was guessing, you know, should I have said something differently? Should I have approached it, you know, said something more about myself or less about myself? And, you know, I just think you're always going to have that, whether it's, the company's just not looking for someone to sponsor someone right then and they're just kind of being courteous and, and you know, just getting back to you, but they're not actually being serious about it. And, uh, but, you know, specifically, I don't, I don't really know if I've ever had a pretty like bad example of something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know with, with Red Bull, when I was talking to them, um, I uh, kind of wanted, I was kind of rushing it, I felt like, mm. just, you know, because like, with their process, it's so long and, and it's like, it's, you know, they're talking, you're talking to your manager and, and, or not your manager yet, but someone there. And uh, I uh, felt like, you know, like they gave me like such a good uh, indication that like I was going in the right way that I uh, took it upon myself to put their logo on something that shouldn't have been on. And uh. they, they let me know like right away, like, dude, you can't be doing this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, uh, I, uh, kind of, you know, so like now that I'm looking back at it, like, you're definitely right that I should have been doing that until, like, you said, things are like set, you know, things are official. And, uh, like, with, with them, like, they take that stuff more serious than, um, yeah. you know, maybe some other companies would, as, you know, as like, they should, you know, because they have, you know, such a, they want to protect that, you know, protect what they have, which is that their logo, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's kind of something I look back at that I, Probably didn't do <laughs> the best. Probably should you know, I learned from that. So. No, I'm glad you brought that up because that's kind of the intent of this question is like, um, you know, where are things that they just did, it didn't go right. Something wasn't right. And then you learn from it. And then by people listening to the show, they can learn from it. And then they never make that mistake. Um, but yeah, that's a really good one, especially for Red Bull because, you know, they're ultra exclusive with their – um, sponsorships, right? It, they don't, at least I don't think so. I think this is still the case. They don't just sell like a Red Bull hat. You know, you can't just get these things. No, no yeah. You know, you got to be part of the <laughs> no, group. No, I've been offered, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the thing. Like if you get the hat, it's uh, you know you're part of the Red Bull fam. So mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that's what makes it. You know, that's kind of their strategy. I feel like is different from the other companies. But say it's Monster or Rockstar that kind of mm-hmm. get their uh, get their brand out there as much as possible. So it's a uh, two different ways to look at it. So yeah, I could definitely see that as a differentiator. Like you know, Monster is a great example where I'm pretty sure you can just buy Monster decal kits for your snowmobile and just like slap them on um all over the place which is which is cool but you know they're from an exclusivity standpoint that's not the brand image that red bull is going for so i could see that um you know you put it on something and they they weren't necessarily approving that like oh wow no hold on don't mess with our exclusivity like we've worked hard to maintain this so that's that's pretty interesting yeah exactly and that's the you know something that um you know i uh I'm learning from with other companies. You know, I, I try to not to push things, but I'm talking to a potential sponsor and I don't want to, I want them to, I want to focus on, you know, my results. I feel like that's the biggest indication of how I can, uh, you know, um, be a, a good you know, partner for them is, you know, putting a lot of focus into my results and then my, uh, my social medias, which is, uh, you know, well, I've always thought of my social medias as proof of, you know, how, um, um, Oh, well, I can, you know, market, you know, their brand for them. So, like, honestly, there's no better proof than your social medias, whether it's, you know, your followers or whatever. Hey, honestly, that's how people know that, you know, or other companies know that your people are into what you do. And, you know, um, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I'm going back to my notes here and that I just thought of a different, uh, maybe the, what the intro for the show is going to be. How orienteering, Street Fighter Five, and pretzels can get you sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> that's it. That's the show. <laughs> that's, that's that's the name of the man. show. Um, I, think, I think it's your best title. That's it. It's gonna you know get trillions of downloads. Trillions. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I got a, a different question here. I mean, it, is there something unique that you've done in the past to promote your sponsors? Um. I thought about that question. Um, honestly, after I'll visit promoting them like to other people, but something I've always done and I felt like I needed to do, whether it's, you know, just cause you know, they uh, have to thank them. But after the season, I usually send out uh, something, whether it's to them, whether it's, you know, a, a thank you note or something mm-hmm. a little bit bigger. Like this year, I, uh, I cut up my, uh, the track on my sled. Oh. I cut it up into like one, one foot sections. And I studded it up and I put, you know, all the studs and the backer plate on it. And, uh, and this is the sl- track from, you know, the uh, sled that I raced because we don't use them after one year. So yeah. we just, we kind of just try some. So I thought, you know, it'd be a good idea to cut it up and put it on a, on like a wooden plaque and, you know, mm. send it out to my sponsors and you know, say thank you, you know, um, you know, for helping me out this year, whether it's this year or the past, whatever year they did with me, you know, I think that's, you know, you can't do that enough, honestly, with them. That it's just those little things, because yeah, you know, these these you know you think that they're huge companies when you're talking to like you know, these these companies that you might not ever have met, but like, like these little things that people appreciate. You know, when they get this in the mail, and like that's what goes a long way, honestly, is um, when they see stuff like that that you actually do appreciate them. Um, you know, because I see it so many times like with with other people, like whether they lose a sponsor, so I just feel like it's just them not talking to them enough and they are communicating and appreciate them enough, honestly, because mm-hmm. if you're just taking their money and just taking, 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 and not really giving, it's kind of, you know, it's not really a partnership anymore. It's just mm-hmm. you just kind of using them. And I kind of don't want it to be like that with my sponsors. I uh, always want to be able to show what I can give them first. And I feel like a lot of my uh, sponsors, whether it's with the, uh, with Red Bull or you know, more of like the local ones like um, ACT or um, with um, even with Epic Star, you kind of have to learn to give first, whether it's like, you know, not what you're looking to get out of them. You know, there's product or money or whatever. You kind of have to give and tell them that you're what you're looking, but you can give them first is, you know, um, what they're looking for. Oh, sweet. And you know what? You just reminded me, we, we didn't really talk about, uh, you know, some of the, the family friends and the local companies that you work with, um, 
I don't know. Is there? Do you have an example of one of those that we can kind of pull out real quick about how that started and maybe, um, you know, what you do for them? Yes. Um, so t- my dad's like best friend, Tim. He's been racing with me since I was little, since like almost my first race. Hmm. Um, and he's just he's just a good friend, honestly. He he has two daughters. They never, you know, they were like into dancing. They were never racers or anything and mm-hmm. he's a big snowmobiler he, he's trail rides with uh, my parents when back when they used to trail ride a lot and uh, mm-hmm. he owns a company that's uh, locally here uh, by chicago and um, i always like to make sure that you know his company is um one of the first and foremost that um you know whether it's like on my sponsor list or um size that the uh, logo size of his logo on my slide you know because honestly he is invaluable to me and what how she helps because he comes to every single race mm. and it's just you're going to have those people that come to the you know like volunteers and you know that help you out and those are the people you have to thank the most because honestly you're not going to find those with a sponsor with those people that are want they're going to be there because they want to be there and they want to see you succeed and that's exactly what Timmy is he uh he's just a you know a good friend and i always like to make sure that his company is uh whether it's going to help him like he owns a compressor uh, company so what he does is like a lot of his customers are you know bigger companies that probably are not racing or watching my races or you know i don't know how much business he gets from um you know my uh having his logo with us mm-hmm. and uh but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter honestly you just gotta make sure that you know that those people are, are you know that show that you appreciate them by doing stuff like that yeah no that's good Oh, thanks for sharing that story too. Um, well, I actually want to move on real quick to the the lightning round here, which is uh, I've been really making this more lightning uh, <laughs> after doing this for a little while because uh, I got it down to just one question because I, I just love this question and I haven't been able to ask it on a couple of the previous episodes here, so I'm, I'm glad to bring it back here. Uh, if you could sponsor anyone in the world, who would you choose and why? I, mean, I thought about this question and I was just trying to think of someone besides this person. Mm. And, uh, I, I just can't, I just can't. I, I was like, man, I, I don't want to name this guy, but I, I, I have to, I mean, Levi Valley is just oh, the dude. Yep. Leave. Honestly. Yep. Leave. He, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, <him. laughs> uh, but no, he's just, he's just, a, he's just, a, he's the man. He's like, he does everything. I feel like, um, like, what perfect, you know, whether it's, you know, how he, uh, how he, is, you know, good for his sponsors and how he brands himself. And, you know, he's just, any of you ever do, I'm sure, you know, you honestly know him, please, you know, you talk to him. Yeah. He's just one of those guys. That he, just, he talks to you like he's like one of your friends and he's just going to tell you stories and stories and stories. And he's just like, when I want to, I see myself sponsor someone, it's, you know, someone like that that, that shows himself, you know, through what he does and, you know, how he talks and, mm-hmm. you know, and how, you know who he is and you know honestly that guy is a i think he's a, the best in the business when it comes to that stuff good yeah and uh you know i've had people on the show that actually <laughs> know him right and that actually spend time with him so like kyle <laughs> Pauline, uh zach mason evan doubt they were all they're all on his team or were on his team at some point um mm-hmm. and yeah they they've said very very positive things about um you know the way he handles himself the way he treats the team um, the way he treats fans and sponsors alike. So, um, yeah, I'm not too surprised to hear his name um, fall out of your mouth there and, and uh, for that question. Awesome. Yeah, so this was like a year ago, I think. Um, I didn't know Levi too well at the time, but uh, I think I met him maybe once or twice before. Maybe one time. But we were uh, riding up in Munising, just kind of like doing this like scope trail ride thing like kind of like looking out looking at this piece of land for a, a possible red bull event and uh they invited me up there and uh, he, he was there with his kids and everything and uh we were out riding and he he was behind me i'm on my sled and he's behind me on his sled and he comes up we're like kind of like in like a slow four section and we're kind of going slow because some of the guys we have with us are, are uh, you know maybe not like the best riders so mm-hmm. <laughs> we're taking our time and uh he uh, come up next to me. He like, looks at my sled. He like points at my sled. He's like, "What is that?" And I look over. 
like pointing at like I write a I write a blizzard, you know, like mm-hmm. an eight fifty blizzard, a skidoo. He's mm-hmm. like, What is that, blizzard? And like uh blizzard's like what is that? Like that's the uh the name of the sled. He's like You ever been to Dairy Queen? <laughs> uh, yeah, I love this. <laughs> and he's just like, I'm just like, what is this guy thinking about? Yeah, <laughs> he just sees that, and he's like, he's, he's just one of those guys. He's like super squirrely, and it's like, it's just like his mind's just everywhere at the same time. And it's kind of funny, honestly. I don't know. That's my favorite Levi story. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, and I I ride Munising area, so that's that's pretty cool to hear that. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm yeah. I'm from. Yeah, that's uh, cool being up there. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um so I go up the Michigan route to get there and um yeah, I I ride Munising uh I try to get up there every year or at least around that area. Yeah, that was cool being up on that that island right there. Was it Grand Island, I think it was? Uh we rode around in there. It was it was cool just being on those cliffs. Like we were like we were riding like couple feet away from like dropping off a cliff into like this <laughs> waterfall it was just, it was crazy how close we were to the cliff it was that was a cool ride there for sure you know i was uh i think um i might be wrong about the exact area so i won't say what city it was but it was you know northern michigan and uh you know it was right on the coast uh the shore for for lake superior and lake superior like it's 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 sketchy out there they got a lot a lot going on and uh, we were, it was me and my brother and a couple of our friends, and we were getting some gas somewhere. And, um, you know, it was like right on the edge there uh, in the road, drove along Lake Superior. And we asked the, the gas station attendant, like, hey, what's a, you know, what's the fastest way back to the trail? You know, we came in one way. It wasn't really the best way. And then the snow wasn't great. So we were driving on the road a little bit. And we didn't like that. So is there is there a better way back to the trail? And uh, she was like, oh, just uh, shoot out there. And she's pointing at Lake Superior. She's just, just stick close to the shoreline, you know, and just go out there. <laughs> I was like, whoa, hold on. Isn't like the Edmonds Fitzgerald right there somewhere? Didn't it crash? And, and uh, I mean, I'm looking at this thing, and it's, like, treacherous. It looks terrifying. I'm like, uh, nope, we'll just ride the pavement. Like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going out there. <laughs> I am not going out there. Like you guys, it's cool if you want to go there, but like I'm not hopping in after you if you fall in because it was just super sketchy. Um, yeah. Either way, I I I think it was somewhere around the Munising area, but I just can't. <clears throat> that doesn't seem right when I say it, so I'm not exactly sure what it was. But it was terrifying nonetheless. And yeah, we uh, you know, the luckily, well, I run I run Stud Boy stuff, but. Um, luckily stud boy stuff was on there. Cause uh, otherwise these, uh, these pavement would have <laughs> ripped up my stock carbides in like a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Good stories. Go Good times. Snowmobiling is so much fun. Oh my gosh. So much fun. I wish I could throw right more. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I love it, but you know, it's funny for people who don't snowmobile and they talk to you about it and they're, they're trying to like find some rational reason of why you do it. They're like, Oh, why do you? Why do you do that? You can only ride it so many times a, a year and so many months. And I was like, "What do you want me to give you some something that makes sense? Like, do you want me to answer this in some way that like has logic to it? I, I can't do that. Uh, I don't know. It's fun. I like it. Um, I want to dump a whole bunch of money into it with like zero return and just you know, <laughs> like <laughs> just ride like three times. I mean, I almost want to ask people like, do you go to Cedar Point or like you know? what's the king's island or like do you go to any sort of theme park and wait in line for 15 hours to go on a 30 second ride like yeah that doesn't make sense either but guess what humans do it a lot but yeah, you just story. gotta give those people a helmet and just say go on this just, one yeah and just, they'll come back with a different mindset <laughs> yeah just do it and like get your checkbook out afterwards because you're going to be spending some money <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we're going to start wrapping things up here at the finish line. Um, what's one thing that our listeners need to take away from this conversation? If they forgot everything else, what's the one thing they should take away? Honestly, I just think it's, you know, if you're someone that's kind of just re- listening to this, I think you should uh, just really just you have to focus on your results first. Like That was one thing that, you know, with, uh, with Red Bull, they told me that they, they want me to, you know, they want, only want to sponsor the people that are the best, honestly. And I think mm-hmm. that's true with a lot of companies. So you, you have to focus on, you know, doing well, 
with whatever it is you do, like you said, if you're uh, orienteering or whatever it is, you want to be the best at that. So just focus on, uh, you know, <laughs> I can't even say it right. Am I, saying it right? Ori- I don't know. I mean, I have no idea, but that sounds, that sounds right. Looks like we got to get into this and actually start doing this thing. Yeah. But, it's like geocaching. You know what geocaching is? Yeah, that's what I thought you were going to say originally. That's where, like, well, okay, maybe hey. I don't fully understand, but I think that's where, you like, people will release these maps that it has, like, some treasure in this map, and you got to, like, follow the, you know, your GPS to find <laughs> it. Is that right? Yeah, that's geocaching pretty much. Perfect. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I need to be oh, yeah. a geocacher... Uh-huh. And, but be the best in the world, and maybe I'll get sponsored by Red Bull. Maybe. Maybe be the first. Actually, you know what, Red Bull? If you're looking for the best in the world, look, at the, you came to the right place. Because I produce the best motorsports marketing and sponsorship-focused <laughs> podcast in the world. It don't don't mind the fact that it's the only one. That's not. Let's not even get into that. <laughs> let's just that's, let's just say it's the best. <laughs> and if there is another one out there, the this is definitely the only one. Yeah. <laughs> if there is another one out there, for some reason I haven't seen yet, this is definitely the best one produced out of Southwest Michigan, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> so Red Bull, hit me up. Hit me up. I like Red Bull. I like it sometimes when it's mixed with right. other drinks too. Um, but yeah. Hey, they're all awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, uh, what's the best way for people listening to connect with you? Um, find me on Instagram at 220stern. By the way, my number is 220. I don't think I told anybody that. But, uh, oh, no. 220. 220stern. Yep. Yep, 220. I don't know why I picked 220. Oh, I know why. I uh, I was number 22. or 22C was my number when I was racing kitty cats. Oh, okay. And I just changed the C into a, a zero. I think that's yeah, that's why. Two twenty. Okay, let me let me yeah. ask you, why'd you pick the C originally? Uh, I wanted to be number twenty two. I couldn't be twenty two because there was already number twenty two. So I only thought you could have a C because of Blair Morgan. That's, the right. that's why. Yeah, yeah. That's why. But I didn't know you could have other other letters. I didn't know you could have like S or G. I just thought it was just like a thing, like you just had to have a C. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's why I did. <laughs> I had – okay, next question here, next trivia question. Do you know why Blair Morgan had a C in his? It's for Canada, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, I knew he, that. he was yeah. on the show, and I asked him that, and I was totally expecting it to be like some technical explanation. He's like, no, I just picked it because of Canada. And I was like, what? Yep. <laughs> you know how many like multiple choice questions I got wrong when I came to number seven and I picked C because I thought that's just what you had to do when you had the number seven is you had to have C next to it. And I was like, it was all, it was all for just this for just because you randomly picked it. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. I need to go talk to all my teachers in the past and be like, look, I know I picked seven. Wait, C. You picked you oh, pick yeah. seven C on, like, on all the ACTs that you took. It was always seven. I always, mean, always C for seven. <laughs> I might be exaggerating a little bit, but I will tell you if I didn't know the answer, I would default to 7C. That is the truth. The truth. <laughs> the greatest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. The, it's so, I mean, I think that I told Blair that same thing, but if not, I, sometimes he might listen to the shows. I don't know. But Blair, like, it, it was all for you, buddy. All for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Nobody understood it either when I was yeah. at school because, like, they just didn't get that stuff and with some of the people I hung out with. And, and uh, like, yeah, 7C. They're like, uh, okay, what does that mean? Like, never mind. I shouldn't even be your friend anymore after that comment. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you knew what it was. Uh, all right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to chat tonight. This has been a, this has been a good conversation. I feel like we had a lot of fun, uh, but I'm going to leave it at this. Have fun and ride safe. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by Four Wheel Parts. I want you to make sure that you are subscribed to this show, whether it's on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss upcoming guests and upcoming episodes. And then follow us on social media. We're on all of the platforms. You can find out the most content, though, on our Facebook page. That's where we do our live videos. 
To get some insider access to upcoming guests, you can also check out the sponsored Rider Club on Facebook. It is a support network where you can ask questions about best practices and get feedback from our audience. A special thanks goes out to our sponsors, Four Wheel Parts, Amsoil, Solder Weld, Bold Racing, TopThePodium.com, and Crash Addict Industries. And I also want to shout out some of our other partners, MBRP, HMK USA, Sudboy Traction, and High Octane Coffee. I look forward to serving you again next week. Until then, have fun and ride safe.